now move uh, to Greenland, where I cited a paper by Ola Johannesson in 2005. Now, you're going to love this, because the paper is quite plain, and I actually put the words from the paper on the slide that you can see now. Colors indicate ice sheet elevation change rate in centimeters per year from satellite altimeter data from 1992 to 2003. That's an 11 year period. The spatially averaged increase in the thickness of the ice is 5.4 plus or minus 0.2 centimeters per year. So what we're talking about is 11 years in which in total something like 55 centimeters which is nearly two feet of extra ice on average, was laid down across the whole of the Greenland ice sheet. At a time when we've been told the whole Greenland ice sheet is disintegrating, and in fact, there's been this massive accumulation, two feet of ice. So what the uh, professor does is his favorite trick. He gets onto the author of the paper, and he doesn't ask him, is the quotation from your 2005 paper accurate? Because, of course, he's looked up the 2005 paper and he's found my quotation is accurate. So here am I, in fact, producing an accurate quotation from a paper that was indeed published in 2005, and it said the sea ice had been growing at a rate of two feet over an 11-year period. And so what then happens is that he gets... The professor gets a later paper by uh, Johannesson, this time 2009. And he finds that this time uh, Johannesson has decided that there's been a loss of sea ice, uh, not sea ice, land ice, I should say, in Greenland. And indeed, at one point, a figure of how much ice is being lost is mentioned in one of the papers that is cited by the professor at this point. He said, 273 gigatons, that's billions of tons, 273 billion tons of Arctic ice of, uh, from Greenland disappeared by implication because of human-caused global warming. And we're not quite told in what period that this 273 gigatons disappeared, but anyway, it disappeared, so we're told. And this, therefore, is put forward in refutation of the fact there'd been this accumulation of ice before. Now, of course, first of all, even if it had subsequently disappeared, it doesn't affect the fact that during a period when there was rapid global warming going on, 1992 to 2001 in particular, very rapid global warming, and yet at that time the ice was accumulating on Greenland. And since uh, 2001, it's basically been cooling worldwide, and yet suddenly we're now told Greenland is melting. And melting by the amount of 273 gigatons in Johannesson's paper of 2009. So 273 gigatons. You see, as a mathematician, when you see a figure, you think there is something at last that I can go and actually check. So I got onto the CIA and I said, can you tell me how much ice, what is the ice extent of Greenland? Because of course it's a land mass with no ice at the edges, but ice all the way across the middle. So how much is the ice extent of Greenland? And they know this stuff. They have all these spy satellites. They're working this stuff out all the time. So they said, yeah, the ice extent, according to the CIA, is 1,755,637 square kilometers. So, I then worked out, okay, 273 gigatons of ice. How much ice thickness is that going to be? Well, it works out at six inches of ice thickness. So, of the two feet that Johannesson said had accumulated up until 2003, now six inches has gone again. Well, hey, that doesn't sound too bad to me. And I thought, let's do another sum. Let's find out what the entire ocean surface area of the world is, so we can work out 273 gigatons of ice. How much is that going to raise sea level by? Because that's what the big worry is here. Well, 
you've got 361,226,400 square kilometers of open ocean. And that means that allowing for the fact that the density of ice is 0.915 times that of water, you have to allow for that in the calculation, then the 273 gigatons of ice loss would be expected to raise global sea level by less than, get this, one millimeter. In fact, somewhere around a thirtieth to a fortieth of an inch. You simply wouldn't be able to measure it with any tide gate, and even a satellite would find difficulty in noticing so minuscule a change. So what we're seeing here is they're presenting the figures now in a way in which you can't tell that the figures are basically harmless because it sounds like a really big number. But in practice, it makes virtually no difference to the world's climate. And, of course, the Greenland climate, like that of the Arctic as a whole, is a volatile climate. And the, the reasons for this are very well understood, but, of course, the professor doesn't understand them. He expresses surprise at this point that the uh, Arctic is likely to warm a great deal more than the rest of the world if we get any global warming. But, of course, by the same token, it'll cool much faster than the rest of the world if we get global cooling. And the reason for this is what's called polar amplification. This is a well-known phenomenon by which the tropical air rises and is then advected, carried horizontally towards the, uh, away from the tropics, and then it subsides down to the poles and, and keeps them warmer than they would otherwise be. And this process is very well understood by climatologists, but not, of course, by specialists in the mechanics of uh, fluid engineering. It's, it's a different field. Uh, and so he expresses surprise. But the real thing is that the way they're now trying to measure Greenland is not by the old tried and tested laser altimetry, which gives you a reasonably robust result. They're using a fancy new pair of satellites called the Gravitational Anomaly Experiment. And that tries to measure tiny discrepancies in the gravitational field of the Earth caused by changes in the ice mass on Greenland, for instance. And the trouble with that, uh, as you can tell by just my description of what it's trying to do, is that it's very difficult to do that. It's very difficult to calibrate it. The Earth doesn't keep its shape in a fixed way. There's always volcanic and, and uh, sort of movement of, of tectonic plates going on all the time. So trying to calibrate this thing has proven to be an absolute nightmare so that they can't actually tell you whether the ice loss that they say is going on at the moment is one inch a year or four inches a year, it's somewhere between those two. Well, that's not, I and mean, that's so wide a range, it's not really useful. We can't even tell, actually, whether the ice is, is being lost at all. And as a recent paper said, and this is a paper, of course, that wasn't mentioned by the professor, but we're going to end this section by mentioning it. Would you not agree with Cazeneuve, 2006, who concludes that a long series of space-based observations will be necessary before we can resolve the disturbingly large scatter in Greenland's ice loss calculations as obtained from the gravitational anomaly satellites. 50 to 200 gigatons a year, or 1 to 4 inches of ice loss, and provide a definitive view of what is happening in Greenland. That's what the scientists are actually saying, the scientists who are using these measurements day in and day out. So once again, my slide was accurate, even if we use the updatings of Johannesson et al., we still have a formidable net ice growth in Greenland, which would take a long time to dissipate. And in any case, even if it did dissipate, the amount of extra water ending up in the oceans would raise those levels by perhaps, if you really pushed it, one millimeter per year. Not exactly anything to write home about. So we'll end that section there.